spend 65 days, would that be a heaven for you? Would that be enjoyable? No, that would be hell. I'd be living in fear all the time. So the first thing that we must realize is that people doing whatever they want to do would not be enjoyable. Understand? But then some of you may think, hey, you know what? I don't mean total anarchy. I just mean doing whatever I want within the confines of the laws. I'm not talking about killing anybody. But even in that, non-Christian philosophers tells us doing whatever we want is not good for us. That ultimately is something that is not enjoyable. There's a philosopher, Isaiah Berlin, wrote a paper called Two Concepts of Liberty, where he pointed out that there are two different types of freedom, which he defines as negative and positive freedom. The negative freedom is what we commonly think of when we think of freedom, doing what we want. For instance, freedom for me to right now to stop and go to McDonald's right now. Freedom for you to just stop and just leave this room, leave this worship, turn off the Zoom. Freedom for you not to do your homework. Freedom for you to do whatever you want, eat whatever you want, sleep whenever you want. This is what people commonly think of when they talk about freedom. It is when we are free to do as we please, freedom from any kind of restriction. But he says there's a better sense of freedom, which he calls positive freedom. He says that this is what humans tr truly try to obtain. Positive freedom is what we are free to become. It is freedom to become someone better or do something more meaningful. To illustrate this, most of you guys are not free to get your own place and buy a nice car for yourself. Or you guys are not free to go to third world country on a mission trip as a doctor to serve others, right? You guys are not free to do that because you guys are not doctors. You guys are not ready to do that. This better sense of freedom. But if you wanted to do these things, if you wanted to become a person like that, If you wanted to have that purpose, if you want to dedicate your life to that, you would focus on obtaining that goal, working hard and using your time efficiently and productively. Then you would experience positive freedom of becoming someone you want to become, doing things that you really wanted to do. But to get there, you would have to surrender and restrict all sorts of negative freedom, all sorts of things you want to do right now, just because that's how you feel like doing. In order to have this positive freedom, to become someone better, to have a meaning, you have to voluntarily give up all these other stuff. So doing whatever you want certainly doesn't seem to be the answer to enjoying life, understand? But many of us don't think about that, and we are just, every time we just don't get to do whatever we want, we just get upset. It applies for me, it applies to my wife, it applies to Daniel, it applies to many of us. True enjoyment, we must realize, only comes with true meaning and worth. If there's no God and there's no meaning or purpose for our lives, Where's the enjoyment in that? You're living every day, but you have no reason to live. There's no goal. You're going to just die. There's no purpose for your life. Where's the enjoyment in that? If our lives have no worth and our life is ultimately worthless, where's the enjoyment in that? Without God, we don't have these things. Now, I'm not saying that we should believe in God just so we can have meaning, purpose, and work. 
What I'm trying to point out is that not wanting God, yet wanting purpose and worth is illogical. Even the ability to enjoy is irrational without God. Deep inside, everyone feels that their life has worth. Do you feel like your life has some worth? Do you feel like a worthless person? Everyone who has consciousness knows that their life has some purpose. It has worth. Everyone believes that there is meaning to their existence. It all comes, it all comes down to our will. There's either a will to obey God or the will to be God of our life. Next, I want to talk about the misrepresentation of God in the advertisement. The advertisement infers God as a means to an end. What I mean by that is, is that God is someone who measures your performance, someone who, that you must get by to get to heaven. He's like the ultimate gatekeeper. But this is miscategorization of God. God is not the means to get to an object. God is the object. God is the objective of my enjoyment. He's not the means I have to go through so I can get to my enjoyment. God must be our enjoyment. As we discussed countless times, heaven is not a place but a person. It is the relationship with God that ultimately gives me fulfillment satisfaction, and yes, enjoyment. To be with God and enjoy Him forever, that's heaven. We all know that. I believe that everyone will agree with me when I say that true enjoyment comes from relationships. Yes, a big house would be enjoyable, but it wouldn't be enjoyable if I was living there by myself. I had no one to share with. There's nobody that's coming to my house to enjoy this big house. It just couldn't be lonely if I lived in a big house for myself. You can have all the riches and do whatever you want, but if you're the only person on the planet, would that be enjoyable? Wow, I have all these things, but I have no one to share this with. What's the point of a nice car or fashionable outfit if there's no one to show off to, right? No one to enjoy it with. Our ultimate enjoyment comes from relationships. Relationship is valuable, but we can't buy it. Not the true kind anyways, right? Relationship is free. It's not like I charge people for my relationship. Hey, when I have a relationship, I've got a thousand dollars a day. It doesn't work that way. But relationship, even though it's free, it's not cheap. Relationship requires work and it requires sacrifice. You cannot have happy, fulfilled, enjoyable relationship between two self-gratifying in, in, in self gratifying individuals. If James and his girlfriend were both self-gratified, meaning that they just want to satisfy themselves. They wouldn't be able to have a true enjoyable relationship in that. You can't. In a magazine interview, Francois Sagan, the, the famous French writer, was asked, have you lived a life of freedom that you wanted to live? And she said, yes. Well, I was obviously not free when I was in love with someone, but what is not in love all the time, fortunately. This is a wonderful, realistic reality. And I'll tell you why. The freedom to love only comes if you surrender all kinds of individual freedoms. Understand? Because I want to love someone, I'm going to give up my freedom. You know, relationship, any relationship, self-sacrifice is a requirement. But self-sacrifice is not only required, but it's enjoyable. Giving up myself 
making sacrifices is so much enjoyable when you are in a relationship. Surrendering my individual freedom to go out with my friends, to watch football games, to go out and eat the things that I want to eat, to give that up because I love my wife, because I love Daniel, because I love God, gives me joy, gives me satisfaction. It brings enjoyment to my life that there's no way I can enjoy it if I were just self-gratifying, just doing things just to make myself happy. As we close, let's look at today's scripture one more time. It says this, you make known to me the path of life. In your presence, there's fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. In God, we know exactly who we are, why we exist, how we can be truly fulfilled and be truly happy. We know how to enjoy our lives to the fullest. You may think that you will be happier doing what you want. You may think that life is more enjoyable apart from God, but there is no true happiness outside the loving relationship with God. It just doesn't exist. It's, it's an imagination. I want to ask you, from today on, don't deceive yourselves. The world is selling the propaganda that your life is so much more enjoyable with the freedom from God, freedom to sin, freedom to do what you want. But don't buy this deceit. Apart from God, there is no true love, true peace, true hope, true happiness, true enjoyment of anything that's good. For all of the youth today, for all of the youth, I want to tell you this. Take it to heart. Freedom becomes poison if you don't know how to choose. Freedom becomes poison if you don't know how to choose. So be honest with yourself. Are you capable of making the right choice? Some of you may, but many are not. And that's okay. That's why God gave us parents. That's why God gave us your teachers and me, people around you. Depend on God. Talk to your parents. Talk to us. Learn to make the right choices so that you can truly enjoy your life. I want you to take this to heart. I want to just etch it into your brain, doing what I want. That's not true enjoyment. I'm not going to let myself fool myself again. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, you have defined us, Lord. You have created us. You have defined us. And you provided for us everything we need for our fulfillment, satisfaction, enjoyment, to be happy. And that's relationship with you, and that's relationship with every one of us that's around us, Lord. There's no enjoyment outside of relationship, Lord. It's just deceit. Help us to realize the truth, Lord. The truth. That we are not going to be happy doing what I want to do. Because what I want to do is self-gratifying, Lord. That we are truly, truly happy when we are in a loving relationship with you and others, Lord. Help us to see that clearly and not be deceived by the world. Not be deceived by this propaganda we watch in advertisement, in TV, on the internet, Lord. Help us to get our truth from the Bible, your word, from you, Lord. We thank you.
that you are taking care of us, that it, that even though we sin this week, that you are forgiving us over and over. You're sanctifying us over and over again, Lord. You're cleaning us, purifying us every single day. You are chiseling us as a gem. You are bringing to our lives more worth to our life, Lord. And I pray that our youth will be mature, will be pure, and will hunger and thirst for your righteousness. We also thank you that you're keeping us safe and healthy and providing everything for us. Help us to daily seek you and know that everything else will be added unto me when I seek you first, Lord. We thank you and we pray all these things in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. In the name of Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.